Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. It's the 21st of March, a Wednesday, and I hope you're having a great day. Uh, Bob Ulrich is in studio with me again today. We're going to take up right where we left off yesterday, Bob, with our discussion of the seven archetypes of rapture in Scripture. Well, yesterday we covered Enoch, we covered Moses, and we covered Elijah. Mm -hmm. And of course, coming to the fourth one, most important of all, is Jesus. That's right. As a type of our rapture one day. And Jesus stands at the center of time, at the center of eternity. You know, it's interesting. When you study the Bible, you discover that time is a line. I've, in fact, recently written a book to that effect, and God created time. And if the Bible says he, he created the end from the beginning. That is to say, he could see the end, he created the beginning, so time is finite. That is to say, it's like a line, or let's call it a piece of string, with, with an end or a termination point at each end. Therefore, it's a finite string, and certain events along that string are recorded in the Bible, both past, present, and future. And right in the middle of the timeline is Jesus, the, uh, the cross of Christ, which is the cure for the sin of this world. And if you haven't read that book, Time Travelers of the Bible, believe me, it'll, make, it'll stretch your brain. Uh, there are chapters in there that'll just make you literally want to read each of the paragraphs two or three times to truly try to wrap your arms around some of the information because it's not things that we're normally exposed to. Uh, a lot of rave reviews, people who've read the book have just said, you know, this book has changed my life. I've never viewed the timeline of man quite like this before. So it's, uh, it's quite a work, almost 600 pages. Well, <laughs> it turned out to be a lot more pages than I thought. But I think that it has a lot to offer. And you don't have to read all 500-some-odd pages. Oh, but they'll want to. It's really city. fascinating. Really fascinating. <clears throat> and talking about time and talking about the resurrection, if you stretch out time, you go back to the beginning. The first type of the resurrection is Enoch. The second type of the resurrection is found in the life of Moses. The third type is found in Elijah, where Elijah is taken directly to heaven without dying. The fourth one, of course, is Jesus, who is taken directly uh, to heaven without dying. And as a matter of fact, he takes with him the fifth archetype, and that would be uh, the Old Testament saints. Matthew twenty-seven fifty-one, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent from top to the bottom. The earth did quake rocks rent, graves open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So we have here the Old Testament saints who died with the faith in the coming Savior, and by that faith they were raised up to newness of life. And we read in two or three other places in the New Testament that that he then took them to heaven with him when he rose. Now, there were obviously a lot more than 500 Old Testament saints. Oh, yeah. So when the scripture <clears throat> says that Jesus led captivity captive, I mean, when he died and rose again, he went down into the bowels of the earth, didn't he? And, and you really need to explain that, because I don't think very many people, other than the viewers of Prophecy and the News, of course, really fully understand what well, happened that day. he preached to the spirits in prison, according to Peter. <clears throat> and those spirits in prison were there because of the sins they committed before the flood back in the old days. And they were the, the angels who left their first estate. And without going into a great dissertation on Sheol, Bob, those Old Testament saints were living in a place called paradise. And they were, they were in Abraham's bosom. That's the New Testament idea there. And when Jesus rose... He emptied that place out, and he took those Old Testament saints with him. I mean, understanding that concept, there were actually two compartments in the bowels of the earth, paradise yeah. and Sheol, right. uh, and with a great gulf in between that no man could pass, I think is what the Scripture says. And so he cleaned out part of it, took those Old Testament saints to heaven when he, met, when he went back to meet his father. 
And they were resurrected. In other words, uh, along with him, they experienced resurrection. So now we have, uh, we have Enoch, we have Moses, we have Elijah, we have Jesus himself, then the Old Testament saints, number five. Who's next? The number six <laughs> is coming next. It's still future. That's us, the resurrection of the body of Christ, which is the church. You didn't call it the rapture. You called it the resurrection. I called it the resurrection. And you know, I've gotten... Uh, more and more in the habit of doing that lately because the rapture is kind of a preloaded term. Mm. When somebody hears the word rapture, they sort of, the hair on the back of their neck comes up and they say, well, wait a minute, what are you talking about? You mean pre-trib? Are you one of those pre-tribbers or are you a mid-tribber, post-tribber? What are you? Actually, I'm a believer in the resurrection. That's what I am, first and foremost. And I'm going to be resurrected one day. I'm going to be taken up and given a new body that's like his body, and I'll be with him throughout eternity. It's called the resurrection. The term rapture or catching away, I think, is a subterm. That is, it's a secondary term. The idea of being caught up is just part of the larger experience, which is the resurrection. Absolutely. How sad is it that the word pre trib has become a lightning rod now? Yeah. Uh, in the view of many in the church and many in the world, I've heard it as recently as just last Sunday. I, I visited a church and heard a pastor talk about these things as fiction. And the whole book of Revelation in his mind was just simply fiction. Wow. And you know, what is so bad about looking forward to the return of Christ, the first time in history since Pentecost where the bride of Christ is gathered all at the same time, all in one place. I mean, Resurrection Day, this is going to be a glorious, glorious day. Not just for us, but for Jesus. And the fact that he has chosen to do it this way is remarkable to me. Uh, the Old Testament saints were taken at once. Not individually. They were they collected in a particular place, awaiting mm. his resurrection. And then they went with him to heaven. Uh, the body of Christ in the New Testament is being uh, uh, is accumulating, if you will, in a particular place, and they too are awaiting a particular moment in history when they'll hear the sound of His voice, and then they, and then we who are alive and remain, all at once, all believers get resurrected. And what I want to use say? that term. What does it say? We're going to meet the Lord in the air not down on the earth right. we're going to rise up to meet him in the air and there's just a great misconception and just a lack of understanding about and the difference between the rapture and the second coming and just say one more word and we're running out of time air air is air in the greek language or the english language it means the atmospheric heavens it does not mean heaven and it doesn't mean earth mm. he's not coming to earth it's the air mm. now we're going to have to wait for the details, but that's an exciting prospect. I think we have a lot of the details. <laughs> I think you give a lot of the details in your article. Eight pages, I mean, it's gloriously written. I mean, just incredibly, incredibly clear. And, and the thing that struck me most about the article, and I want to repeat this because I think it's the most important thing to understand, is all throughout the Bible, when you have these catchings away and these raptures, whether it's Moses or Elijah or Enoch or Jesus or the Old Testament saints, all of these events are followed by judgment. And you know, if you read Revelation 3.10, I've never had anyone who doesn't believe in the rapture ever give me a clear understanding of what this verse means. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Yeah. We're not going to be here to see the wrath of God. We're not appointed under wrath, are we? That is true. And let's end on the seventh archetype of the rapture, the two witnesses in Revelation. After lying for three and a half days dead in the streets of Jerusalem, they are taken up. They heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. Well, there it is. That's the seventh archetype of the rapture. And, Bob, it's the same from Enoch all the way to the two witnesses. All seven archetypes tell us the same story. Where have I heard that phrase before, come up hither? 
<laughs> we're going to hear that voice one day, aren't That's we? That's the voice we're going to hear. The sound of the trumpet. Absolutely. And how, were, the they, way, and how were they taken up into heaven? I think that's important, the two witnesses. In a cloud. In a cloud. <laughs> we'll be taken up in a cloud. Jesus was taken up in a cloud. Elijah was taken up in a cloud. I, it, you know, it's, uh, it's an amazing story. I hope you'll read it in the April edition of Prophecy in the News magazine, which is at, at this uh, juncture almost out right now. And uh, all you have to do to subscribe to it is just to call the number you see on that screen right there, and you can read the article, and hope you do. And you'll be helping us out here at Prophecy in the News to do some work that is yet unfinished. By the way, stay tuned for tomorrow's update, because we're going to talk about a way that you can participate with us here in a great new undertaking. Hope to see you then. Gary Stearman, along with Bob Ulrich. Keep looking up, everybody.